welcome back to Jim Snedeker Music. This week, we want to talk about how to use a capo to make your singing easier. Now, there's a couple prerequisites for this. You'll definitely want to be able to play first position chords. And I will provide a link here to uh, a video right here that will review those first position chords for you but you'll want to know those. You also want to be able to identify your vocal range's lowest and highest notes. So one of the easiest ways to do that is to find a keyboard uh, to obtain the note name. Or you could also find that note on the guitar even if you don't know the name of the note. So another thing that would be good to know uh, is it'd be good to understand intervals well enough to be able to change keys. That's not a requirement. You'll get something out of this even if you don't know how to do that. But uh, music theory uh, is always, uh, always helps us uh, understand things better and increase our knowledge. Okay, so I'm going to move on in here to step one. And that's where we identify the vocal range using an, an example song. So I'm going to be using... Um, leaving on a jet plane by John Denver and you see that on the screen that's why it's here first thing I want to do is identify the highest comfortable note so I start uh, by doing that and um, this download uh, shows the chords as G C and D so I'm gonna sing a little bit of that and you'll see that uh, that highest note D which sits at the upper part of my vocal range. I could reach it, but it's not my favorite. Let me let me just demonstrate here for you. I'm gonna, I don't have a capo on right now. This is the original key. I'll just demonstrate this. All my bags are packed. I'm ready to go. I'm standing here outside your door. I hate to leave. Up to say goodbye. Now let me do the chorus for you just to give you an idea. I'm going to scroll down here a little bit, hopefully, or not. Hmm. So the chorus so kiss me and smile for me. Tell that's that high D. Tell me that you'll wait for me. So the point of this is even though I can sing the note after a three hour gig, uh, I'm not gonna have much left. In fact, I'll be pretty worn out. And one of the main reasons that you wanna learn how to do this, how to use a capo to make your singing easier, is because if you're like me and you play live, three hours is a long time to sing. So using a capo can help you position these songs to really take the best care of your voice. Anyway, we've identified that. Now, the next thing to do would be to identify the lowest note. To do that, I go through the same steps, but in this example, the lowest note was not really an issue for me. Now, the next thing I'll do is I'll manage any troublesome notes. So at this point, you might want to be asking yourself about a troublesome note. You might want to establish, does that note just pop out of the mel melody? Or is it part of a phrase? If the note's part of a phrase, that's a good sign the song might be too high for you. But if it's just a note that pops out, maybe you could change it without subtracting the song's overall character. So that's it for step one. I have basically found my highest and lowest note, and I've considered any troublesome notes, which this particular example really doesn't have. Okay, in this step, this is step two, and I'm going to continue. First thing I want to do is place my capo. And the reason I'm doing this is to transpose the melody to a new key. So I trans, I place the capo, and that helps me start out transposing the melody to a new key. So if you remember from step one, I could sing that high D, but it feels high, and after three hours, I know I need to take better care of my voice than sing all my highest notes 
too early and wear myself out. So I place the capo on the second fret. Now on the screen, you see the same song, but it's got different chords, doesn't it? So here, I'm gonna be playing the D chord, the G chord, and the A chord. Now listen to what this does as far as uh, the positioning of the melody. All my bags are packed, I'm ready to go. I'm standing here outside your door. I hate to wake you up to say goodbye. But the dawn is breaking, it's early morn. The taxi's waiting, he's blowing his horn. Already I'm so. All right, so what we're going to do here is pull this down a little bit. Let me let me show you what the chorus does now. So kiss me and smile for me. Tell me that you'll wait for me. Hold me like you'll never let me go. Cause I'm leaving on a jet plane. Don't know when I'll be back again. Oh babe, I hate to go. So what I wanted to demonstrate there is that high note that was a high D has been moved down. I transposed it down. So essentially I've transposed the key from G to E. So some other questions to ask yourself in this process would be, can I sing comfortably in the new key? Can I sing this whole song comfortably? Well, yes, I can. Does changing the key keep the energy required to match the original artist's emotion? I believe it does. And again, that's a judgment call. But this key, and with a second capo, second with a capo on the second fret, it's actually the key of E, even though I'm playing D, G, and A. So it really does fit, I believe, the artist's emotion. Uh, are there any falsetto notes? Can you reach them? Well, if not, is the melody memorable enough that it can survive without them? So step three would be to determine how the chords maintain the original feel of the song. Leaving on a jet plane, well, it only has three chords. Transposing, that's not difficult. But hearing them in a new key, ask yourself, do these still adequately reflect, reflect the range and phrasing of the vocal melody? This particular example, I can say yes, but you want to be careful not to go too high or too low because key changes can affect the feel of the melody. And that's, that's, definitely, not, that's definitely heading in the wrong direction if you change that feel, the, the way the melody floats and sits in the pocket. Step four would be to street test it. And by that, I mean you play the song repeatedly until you feel comfortable. I've changed the key. Uh, it's not a huge change, but it's enough to make me more comfortable. I can, I can sing it more easily. And again, back to my three-hour illustration, that makes a difference if you sing and you play for a long time for an audience. So now the thing is for me, I just need to sing this often enough where I get really comfortable with it. Another question you might want to ask yourself, especially as you street test, are there any differences? Are the differences from original opportunity from the original? Are there any opportunities there as you've had to change this to make it your own? Is the melody one that will work in any key? If so, will the changes you make preserve the original feel of the melody? Just consider what the Beatles did and how many styles have been used for their songs. So hopefully that helps you get started transposing, uh, using a capo to make your singing easier. <laughs>